Well, hello again. You are with the Hairy Golfer. I'm here at Tewkesbury Park and I'm on the second tee. Today I'm looking at distance measuring devices. What's the best? What should you buy? What should you choose? So we'll look at the pros and cons of a variety of things. Of course, the cheapest, the cheapest distance measuring device is the old legs. You tee off, you get to around the 150 yard markers and you start walking and you count it. And then the second thing that came along was this. Let's put it that way around. The old stroke saver. So you've got yardages from the tee box to the fairway and from various items to the green, which helps you with your marking off. And if you're lucky, it's marked in an arc. So if you are left or right of the fairway, you can get yourself on one of those arcs. Cracking idea. Unfortunately, these go a little bit out of date. And if you're a member at Cotswold Hills who are forever digging up and removing bunkers around the place, your copy of this goes out of date. But generally, they're pretty good because you usually get a copy of the local rules stuffed in the back. All right, the next thing is the humble golf watch. Cost you about £90 and it gives you a yardage to the middle, front and back of the green and which hole you're on. Don't tell you about the bunkers down the fairway, but you know, it's a pretty good tool. Especially, you know, for 90 quid, that's pretty good. Saves you having to pace it all out properly. And of course, the final item is a laser. Now the, uh, the market leader, we all know it, it's called Bushnell. I think the cheapest model is about 400 to 450 pounds. The most expensive one is 600, 650 pounds, which is an awful lot of brass to save you having to walk. Now I've just bought with my own money, the Decathlon Inesis 900. This cost £129.99 online. It was delivered in about 48 hours. And it looks like this. And this is Golf Sidekick approved. There is an issue with this. Line of sight. From here, and I'll spin you around, can you see the two bunkers down the right hand side and measure off with a laser. Well, no, you can't. So what do you get for your £129.99? You get a hard case, you get the laser, you get the battery, which is good for 5,000 operations, so they say. It's got slope on it if you wish to uh, cheat. You've got a lens cleaner, and a carabiner in case you want to go climbing. There's an instruction book in, I don't know, 40 odd different languages. But the writing is incredibly small, so I haven't bothered with that. You can set this on meters and yards to get the slope you pull out at the rear, so when that yellow is showing, your playing partners can see that you're cheating. Push it back in, you're not cheating. Although how they're going to spot you from the other side of the fairway, I just don't know. Um, that's it. We're on the tee box. Let's get off the tee box, get down the fairway, and actually do some measuring. And I'll show you the pros and cons of each of these devices and you can decide which one to buy or not buy. I need to get this carabiner out. Good thing about this, you've got a belt, belt loop on it, so you could hang it from the belt and shoot from the hip. Although I don't think you'd probably get a reliable yardage doing that way. Right, where are we now? We are 
in the exact centre of the fairway between that 150 yard marker and that one, which I know, which I know is laser measured from the exact centre of the fairway to the exact centre of the green. So what's my golf watch saying? Let's zoom in, 152. So why is my golf watch saying I'm 152? Surely these posts are in the wrong place. Well, no, the posts are in the right place. The problem is, is that GPS is plus or minus four meters. That's its accuracy. That's four and a half yards. So that's plus or minus four and a half yards. So there's a potential for there to be nine yards between its two errors. That's, that's a club, more or less, for us uh, old men who don't hit the ball very far. Now, the uh, US military were asked, how accurate is your GPS? And they said, plus or minus three meters, which doesn't sound very good for the military. But if you're delivering 2,000 pounds of TNT, plus or minus three meters is pretty ad adequate. And if you're delivering 40 megatons of nuclear warhead, then plus or minus five miles is just fine. Whatever your target is, it's going to be having a bad day, isn't it? Obviously, this thing, because it's laser measured, is correct. And if my ball was a little bit further forward from these 150s, I'd just simply walk it out, count it out. Here we go, I'm spot on, as long as my legs are calibrated, which they are. The only downside with uh, pacing it out, and we shall go over, if you imagine a length of rope 150 yards long that's anchored in that green, and uh, the end of the rope finishes here between the markers, if you've driven in the rough and you are by this 150 yard marker if you were to drag that rope across the wider you are from the center of the fairway that isn't 150 yards because the end of the rope would finish the end of the rope would finish two or three yards short of that so if you are pacing it out and you are significantly wide of the center of the fairway you're always having to add on some yardage. Now my rule of thumb over the years has been, if I'm in the rough and wide of the center, 50 yards, add a yard. 100 yards, add two. 150 yards, add three. 200 yards on a par five, add four. I suppose the next thing is to whip out the laser. Now the thing with the whoa shit, the thing with the laser is it won't tell you where the middle of the green is because I'm not too sure you can actually point this at a solid object and not quite sure how it works. And I'm not very good with these because you've got to hold it steady. And I'm wearing bins, so stood right between the 150s. We have got 150 to the middle of the green. Let's see where the flag is today. It's saying 149. Well, the golf watch won't tell you where the flag is. And the, uh, the stroke saver chart won't show you where the flag is. So then, the upsides of pacing it out with or without a stroke saver is it's cheap as long as you're aware that the wider you are from the center of the fairway the more yardage you've got to add two three four yards the upside of the golf watch is it's relatively cheap it's 90 quid but you need to use a pinch of salt because it is plus or minus four and a half yards. I mean, I've seen guys stood at 150 yard markers like this with three different branded golf watches having a bloody argument because one's saying 147 and one's saying 152. 
but the golf watch does not tell you how far it is to hazards. Which you may want to know, you may not want to know. The laser will give you distances to anything that you can see, but if you can't see it, it can't give you a distance. And at 129.99 pence, that's certainly good value. It's certainly worth a chance, isn't it, over paying 400 odd quid for a Bushnell. Let's say I have trouble because I'm wearing bins and I'm not very good at holding it steady. I probably want to lean up against something. Which is why, oh yeah, I could lean up against Basher. He's bigger than me, he's solid enough. So, what do you use and why? And are you one of those people who argues that your GPS is spot on when it certainly isn't spot on? I'm going to use all four. I'm, going to, I'm playing nine holes this morning. I'm going to try each one out and I might do a conclusion at the end. In fact, on the ninth hole, I'm going to test the slope. I'm going to fire it from the bottom of the hill to the flag with a laser, see what the yardage is pull out the slope function and see if the yardage changes. That's if I can point it in the right direction. So bye for now. Bye for now. I'll see you in the middle of the ninth fairway when I get there. Ta-ra. All right, ninth fairway. One last little test. I have positioned myself directly between the 150 yard markers in the middle of the fairway. The GPS says 149, so it's one yard out. Whoop de doo. The question is, is how good is this laser? And does the slope function actually work? Obviously the flag isn't in the middle of the green. So I'm gonna get a different yardage to the GPS and And it's saying it's 149 to the middle. Right, so I've pulled out the uh, the yellow cheetah thing and that says slope activated. We are definitely uphill here. We're definitely a club uphill. So I'd hope that this is now gonna tell me it's much further than 149. And yes, a little extra number popped up telling me that it is playing 156. It works. Well. So what do you use? How much do you actually trust it and rely on it? I mean, as I say, with the old golf watch here that I put on the trolley, had a number of arguments with people over, oh, it's 152, no, mine says 147. No, oh, mine says 149. So if you are taking on tight flags front and back, then um, the golf watch, might, the GPS, any GPS is not gonna be your friend. You could end up in a bunker or off the back of the green chipping simply because that thing is plus or minus four meters. As I say, if you're delivering a multi-warhead, 40 megaton nuclear weapon, yeah, plus or minus four meters is, is pretty decent. Eh? I mean, it's not gonna, not gonna make a huge amount of difference to what you obliterate. But if you are an aggressive golfer and you take on flags, perhaps GPS isn't for you. I quite like this laser. I've only used it on two or three holes so far. Um, 129.99. It is the Inesis 900, Inesis, it's the Inesis 900, it's Golf Sidekick approved, and now it's Harry Golfer approved. Cheerio!